Hi, and welcome to Business in Bloom, a show about budding businesses all around the town. Brought to you by L Group. And now your host, Tara Becker. Hello, and welcome to In Bloom. I'm your host, Tara Becker. And our first guest today is Tamara Morse. She is committed to awakening authentic expression and uncovering the treasures that lie within all of us. As a licensed psychotherapist, she has successfully worked with abused children for 15 years. She was a professor of human sexuality. As an inspirational speaker and workshop trainer, she brings a wealth of experience in love, loss, ancient wisdom, and humor. She's the founder of the company Emerald Echo, an author uh, with her, her first novel, Living on the Edge of a Goodbye, a story of hope, healing, and encouragement after betrayal, a contributing author in Amazon's number one bestseller, Law of Business Attraction. Tamara has most recently published her first children's book that is also currently under consideration as a Disney movie mm. the, entitled Emerald Echo, The Story, a unique underwater journey within, explores universal truths of forgiveness and freedom. Mm. Welcome, Tamara. Thank you, Tara. I'm oh. super happy to be here. Oh, I'm so thrilled to finally have mm. you on. Yes. And first, before we delve into this juicy subject, yes. I just want to offer my congratulations mm. for your uh, recent nuptials mm. and to Mr. Greg Morse, who actually was a previous guest of ours. Yes. And it was a storybook ceremony. Yes. Yes, and you were... Sleeping Beauty, and he was the prince. And it was so good to have you, Tara, there, and your husband. It was awesome to have witnesses to an amazing dream that I had always had about having a Disney wedding. So it was absolutely spectacular where we got to read our own vows to each other. Right. And then have you guys give a blessing back to us mm -hmm. from the audience. Yes. That was amazing. Yes, it was. It was, it was, incredible. It was incredible. It was really from our perspective, it was just as precious as it, mm. I'm sure it was for you. Yes. So, let's get started. So, I understand you are called the sexpert yes. on LA radio, on LA talk radio. Right. Tell us. So. But what, so what's a sex expert? And tell us all about your, what's about your, what's your show all about? Well, you know what? I don't know about you, Tara, but I was born in a household where God made everything but the genitals. So <laughs> I think that that, right from the get-go, I mean, it's always been a taboo subject ever since I had grown up. So part of my journey was that there were so many walls built around sexuality as being taboo. You couldn't talk about it. wasn't okay. Right. And in that environment, it's breeding ground for abuse. I mean, abuse, insensitive lovers, not really knowing who you are as a small piece of the pie. However, a piece of the pie is our sexuality. And having buried that part of me for so many years, what I came to understand through all the years of psychology is that perpetrators or insensitive lovers, people who steal that part of your light, are only after the light. So what I came to understand, what happens with so many women, so many couples down the road, is that when someone comes in to steal that light, I made a decision a very long time ago to bury that light, to bury it so deep that I couldn't even find it. Mm. So when you do that, you cut yourself off from the pleasures of what God intended our sexuality to be. So what I went on to do was become a social worker, right. rescue kids out yes. of the throes of that mm. you know, sexual abuse over and over again. And what I noticed was the same look in their eyes were looking back at me was Tamara, please hear what I can't say. Please come in and right. protect us. Please come in and restore who I really am. Right. So in doing that and working with children in that regard, I came to work with adults that were in sexless marriages, that were in relationships where the number one sexual dysfunction in America yes. is inhibited sexual desire. Okay. It's where women literally shut down. Sure. They don't have the desire, and that is also breeding ground inside of relationships for affairs. Right. So husbands go out, right. and they explore other relationships, 
And really, it's both parties miss out because in the original relationship, people, they do want to be together. Right. But when you have layers upon layers upon layers of protection, right. you can't have the intimacy that you're craving, mm. that you're longing for, that you're wanting to have, and you don't even know how to get in there and get it and find it. So what I did is I looked for it outside of me. I looked for it in degrees in psychology. Right. I looked for it by being a therapist, mm -hmm. by being a human sexuality professor. I mean, I studied everything there was to study about what made relationships work. So let me ask you a question. Mm -hmm. So you are so passionate. How do, could you share a little bit about, you did mention briefly that, mm -hmm. you know, it was kind of taboo in, in your right. upbringing. Right. And you talk a lot about betrayal. Mm -hmm. Could you share with us a little bit about, because like I said, you're passionate about this, so there's mm -hmm. got to be something to that. Definitely. I'm so glad you said that, Tara. Because what I found was the key was on the inside of me. Mm -hmm. And Greg and I both talk about this a lot. When people ask about the storybook relationship that we have, it wasn't always that way. And what we talk about is being able to do the work on ourselves individually. That's what happened before our paths were ever able to cross. Uh -huh. We were so dedicated to finding out what it took to become the right person versus to find the right person. Okay, sure. Okay? Right. So really, the key to unlocking all of that intimacy is internal. Right. And really, it, it goes in this quest where you are literally go on an adventure on the inside of your heart where what I noticed for me that there were like these glaciers around my sexuality. And I noticed that when I got in touch with my own grief about that, what started to happen was like these sheets of ice just broke off. And there was an opening and an awakening that happened on the inside of me that said, my God, I'm vulnerable. And oh my God, I think I'm ready to share my life with someone who's done similar work right. to where we could continue the healing with each other. Because you know that we heal in relationships, right? Right. I mean, we're mirrors for each other. Exactly. You know, I see you mm -hmm. and you see me. Exactly. I mean, if we could do it all on our own, believe me, I would have done it. If I could have looked, just looked in the mirror and just, you know. Figured it out. Figured it out all on my own, I would have done it. Right. I took myself as far as I could come. And then I knew I was ready. Mm -hmm. I knew I was at a point where Greg could enter in. Mm -hmm. And there was that heartfelt request that I did across this Alaskan ocean where I said, you know, God, I'm ready for you in physical form. Mm -hmm. And literally Greg showed up like a couple weeks later. And it's been awesome. And it's been tremendously challenging at the right. same time because I love that you know as iron sharpens iron we just like rub against each other and we are sharper and we're better because we've united and we're 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 one in that right and our commitment right. to helping to heal the world yes so he's got a different message a mm -hmm. different you know right. mission right um however it's been so beautiful because he supports what I'm about in helping to heal women mm -hmm. couples mm -hmm in divine partnerships, because I am so committed to seeing that three and a half billion women and couples yes. who have suffered from sexual abuse mm -hmm. and repression mm -hmm. instead mm -hmm. experience multiple orgasms. Awesome. You know, because seriously, 